Hello English learners, welcome back to the podcast. Today we're talking all about money and managing money. This was a suggestion from one of you, one of the listeners. So I thought it was a good idea and if you have any ideas for future episodes, let me know. I'm usually happy to do them and I love to make episodes that are relevant to you and interesting for you as well. So let me know if you have them. I'm going to be talking about money in just a second. Remember, if you would like some more help with the transcripts, which are the subtitles for the episodes, you want some help with vocabulary, and you want to get some group lessons and other stuff all included, check out my membership at levelupenglish.school. Click on the members button at the top, and that will allow you to access all of these bonus things in exchange for supporting the podcast each month. So if you do that, thank you very much. If not, that's fine. You can also listen for free. This podcast will always be free. So that is the beauty of podcasting. Let's get to the topic of money management, how to manage your money. So of course, this is an important topic for everyone. It's important to feel secure with your money. And it's going to be something that I imagine you will be talking about at some point in English. So it's going to be a useful one in terms of vocabulary and expressions as well. So in this episode, we will cover some vocabulary. We'll look at some different phrases that are commonly used with money and finance. We can talk a little bit about attitudes towards saving, different kinds of people, and attitudes when it comes to money. And I do have some idioms to share at the end as well. So hopefully this will be a nice fun episode, even though money management sounds a little bit boring, but I think it could be a fun one. So something that I've been really thinking about recently is budgeting, making a budget. So a budget, this can be a noun or a verb. This is kind of like a plan of how much money you will spend and save over a certain amount of time. And in the past, I've always been a bit bad at budgeting. I've never really understood it. I mean, I still don't really understand how to do it properly. Everyone talks about how simple it is. I find it quite hard. But what I have been doing in the past is just recording everything I spend money on. So I can see on an app on my phone where I'm spending my money how much is going into work stuff, how much is going into food and stuff like that. Although I think from now on, I'm going to try a bit harder and not just plan what I spent already, but what I am going to spend in the future. So I'm, I want to say kind of, this is my limit for food this month. And if I'm reaching that limit, it's getting a bit close, I can say, okay, let's cut back. Let's not go crazy anymore. That's a good phrase, by the way, to cut back is to reduce something, to do less of something. So if you're, if you're spending too much of your budget, you might need to cut back and spend a little bit less in the future. When you look at your budget or your finance plans, you might have a few different words to talk about them even more. So you have your expenses. This noun talks about things you spend so expenses, these are things that you spend your money on. You might have rent, you might have bills, food, travel, whatever you spend your money on, these are your expenses. So ideally, you want to keep your expenses low, but you want to keep your income high, right? Income is the money you get, your salary, your income. Any money you receive is income. So if that's true, income high, expenses low, you will be able to save. And these are called your savings, right? The noun, your savings. So most people, well, I, I think all people should aim to have some savings, right? If you do not have savings, that means you're living paycheck to paycheck. In other words, you do not have any money left at the end of the month. So you, you get your paycheck, say on the 1st of April, and then you spend all of your money 
So you have no more money until the 1st of May. And that's quite scary. So you're living paycheck to paycheck. Many people are doing that. Actually, let me find out how many. Well, this is really amazing. I just searched for it. According to CNBC, in America, 63% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. It's increased by a few percent. That is unbelievable. More than half of people living with no savings, right? And I was one of them for many years as well. It's a very uncomfortable feeling. And it's fine, you know, everyone has these moments in life where we are living paycheck to paycheck. Hopefully we can work towards getting some savings. And what I have heard on financial podcasts before is you want at least a couple months uh, expenses. So let's say, it depends on your currency, right? But let's say, for example, in three months, you will spend uh, $5,000, just a random number. You want to have $5,000 in your savings. So that means if you lose your job, if something happens, you get sick, you will be okay for quite some time. You don't have to worry right away, right? Another really good way to make some money, especially long-term money, is by investing your money. To invest is to put your money into the stocks of different companies. So if you put your money in the stock market, you're investing your money, and hopefully these investments will give you some interest on your money as well. So interest is a really useful noun. If something has interest, it's like your savings or your investments that give you extra money over time. So if you put some money in the bank, over time, you'll get some bonus money, usually not very much, but that will be your interest, some extra money for having the money in the bank. So yeah, I wonder if you guys could let me know if you have a budget. And if you do, maybe you could even teach me how, how do you budget? How do you do it? I want to know. Come on. <laughs> so budgeting tips would be appreciated. I think that would be interesting to hear as well. Also, let me know whether you are a saver or, or maybe you're a big spender. This might be clear what it means, but a big spender is someone who likes to spend a lot of money. When I was growing up, I was always the saver. My brother was the spender, right? But now, now it's probably better, I imagine. But yeah, I think it's always nice to save as much as you can. But on the other hand, do you really want to restrict yourself in life? This is the problem I always have. Like, I want to save money. But what's the point of saving money if you're really miserable every day because you cannot buy that coffee you want or whatever it is? So that's the problem that I'm facing. And I'm sure many of you can relate to that too. And I wonder if there's a balance to have in the middle of saving and spending, but I imagine that is where a budget would come in handy and a budget would tell you, okay, you can have two coffees a month or something like that. And if you have any more than two, you are over your budget. Two more really useful words in many areas of finance and money are credit and debt or debit, right? Credit, this is when you are owed money. So if you have an account with someone, your account is in credit, that means you have put too much money into the account and you maybe deserve some money in return or something like that. So if I get an, a bill for my internet that costs £40 and I put in £50, I will be £10 in credit. So I guess that means the next time I pay, I only have to pay... 30 pounds, a little bit less. So it's good to be in credit, that's always nice. Conversely, we have this other word. Let's look at the word debt. This is a confusing one because it's written D-E-B-T. It looks like debit, but the B is silent. It's just pronounced D-E-T. So we pronounce it as debt. If you are in debt, that means you owe someone money. In other words, you have negative money. Many people will have student debt from the money they spent on university. Many people have a debt for their mortgage on their house 
may have a debt for their car payment or something like that. And from what I've heard on finance podcasts, there are different types of debt. Mortgage would maybe be considered a good debt or certainly not a bad debt because many people have a mortgage. And if you have lost lots of money because of gambling and you owe the bank lots of money, that's a bad debt. I think we can all agree that's a bad debt. This word mortgage, by the way, is another one with a silent letter. T, we do not pronounce because it's a French word. Mortgage is the money that you pay on a house that you bought. You buy it, the bank gives you a loan. Loan is where they give you money that you can borrow. And you have to pay that mortgage every month to pay back your loan. Very annoying. So let's look at some good expressions now that we could use. As we learnt before, very sadly, many people are struggling to make ends meet right now. Make ends meet. This idiom or this phrase means to basically get enough money to survive from one side of the month to the other side, to make the ends meet up. And it's a very sad situation. I don't know what it's like in your country where you are, but in the UK, people are struggling quite a lot with a financial crisis right now. People are struggling to afford to pay for bills. Energy prices are really, really high. Things in the supermarket are increasing. And of course, wages and income are not increasing as much. So people are really, really struggling and people are struggling to make ends meet even if they are living within their means. So here's one more expression. Live within your means. This expression means you are spending only what you can afford, right? If you are earning, say if your income is a thousand pounds and you're spending two thousand pounds, you're living beyond your means or you're living above your means. So your life is spending more than you're earning. But if you're earning a thousand pounds and you're spending 500 pounds, that's excellent. You're living within your means, right? I make it my main goal to live within my means. Like maybe I don't have a good budget. I don't have the best financial uh, system in place. My most important goal is to live within my means. So even if I'm not earning loads of money, at least I am not losing money every month. And that's the main thing, isn't it? And I guess one way that you could try to live within your means is to become a penny pincher. A penny pincher. So I mentioned before you could be a big spender. A penny pincher is the opposite. It's someone who's kind of pinching and picking up every penny they find. Penny is the word for like a small coin. I don't know how it works in other countries, but at least in the UK, it's one pence, one P. So that's 0.01 pound. So it's one pence. So you're a penny pincher. You might be a penny pincher if you pick up pennies off the floor. If you see one pence on the floor, would you pick it up? I think when I was a teenager, I would, but not anymore. I think it's, you know, it's not much money, but also maybe there's going to be someone who needs it more than me, like a homeless person who might want to take it. But yeah, penny pinch is someone who's very frugal. They save all their money. They don't spend money on things. They use coupons and vouchers all the time. So they never get a bad deal on what they buy. So I think it's kind of a negative word. It's good to be careful with money, but this phrase penny pincher is more negative. Like it's not, it's not a compliment to be called a penny pincher. It's not seen as a good thing. Let's look at one nice phrase before we end today. And this is rolling in something. Right, let's say rolling in money. You could say rolling in dough, Dough is another word for money, like dough, money. But you could be rolling in dough, you could be rolling in money. It just means you have so much money that you could roll in it. Like imagine you put all your money out across the floor, you roll in it like a bed, right? 
oh, he is so rich, he's rolling in money. He's got so much money. So rolling in something means you have so much of something. Do you know anyone who is rolling in money? I don't really know anyone like that, but they would be good friends to have, I imagine. You could get lots of lots of uh, nice presents from them, right? This is probably why I don't have friends like that, because I would just use them to get presents. <laughs> but there we go. Let me just quickly review these last few phrases I mentioned. We had to make ends meet. We also mentioned before living paycheck to paycheck, uh, living within your means, penny pincher. We had rolling in money as well. So there's some more I think I mentioned earlier, but those were the last ones there. I will put all of these words on the members site. I'll put them in the vocabulary list and sometimes they'll be on the main show notes as well. Uh, I will try to do it this time. If I forget, let me know. But thank you for listening until now. Let's quickly go to a couple reviews. I want to say thank you to two people today and then we'll look at a quote to give you some motivation for the rest of your week. So this one is from Layla. I'm Layla from Syria. I'd love to say that I love this podcast and I found it really interesting, helpful and valuable. Thank you, Layla. That's so good to hear that. I appreciate your nice review. One more here from Abdullah Al Sayed, who says, your podcast is very useful and I like the British humour episode so much. I hope to make another episode in the future. I'm from Egypt, but I live in Saudi Arabia. Have a nice day. That's great. Thank you, Abdullah. I really appreciate it hearing that you like that episode. I really enjoyed it too, the humour one, so I will definitely make a part two in the future. I think it's fun and it's useful as well, isn't it? So thank you for that. This week on the private episode on Friday, I am going to be talking about my own attitude towards money. You know, I often like to talk about more personal things on that private one because it's not public to everyone, of course. It's not going to be super personal. I'm not going to be telling you all of my money situations, but just my feelings about money and how that's changed in the past few years. It's something I've been thinking about a lot and I think it might be interesting for some of you guys as well. Anyway, well, the quote to end today is, time is more valuable than money. You can get more money, but you cannot get more time. That's by Jim Ron. And it's a fairly simple one, but it's so important to remember, isn't it? No matter how addicted we get chasing money, let's not forget that time is the real important thing in life. Don't waste your valuable time earning another penny if you don't need it. Is that a good conclusion? I don't know. But think about what that means to you. Maybe there is a time in your life when you will have enough money and you can value your time over your money. But easier said than done, isn't it? But let's leave it there for now. So thank you very much. I will see some of you in the private episode on Friday and I will see everyone else next Wednesday for another episode. But for now, thank you for watching and see you later. Bye-bye. You have been listening to the Level Up English podcast. If you would like to leave a question to be answered on a future episode, then please go to levelupenglish.school forward slash podcast. That's levelupenglish.school slash podcast. And I'll answer your question on a future episode. Thanks for listening.